everyone. So today we are at the Philadelphia Museum of Art and this is the main atrium. And if you look around, there are actually some tapestries that I'm actually gonna talk about later. But today we are going to look at our early Renaissance collection and we're gonna look at some pieces by Fra Angelico and Andre Mantegna and other artists like that. So we're gonna go over to the gallery space and I'll show you some pieces. So here we have some tapestries that were actually designed by Pietro de Cortona and they are displayed here in the Philadelphia Museum of Art. So here is the entranceway to the early Renaissance collection and if you look here you can see that the museum actually has some pieces from Gothic architecture. So the first thing that I want to go over is formal analysis. And this is a method that we use in art history to observe a piece of artwork. And so formal analysis is the act of looking closely to analyze the form the artist produces which consists of observations about the line, shape, color, texture, mass, and composition. And these things give the object its form, its expression, and its meaning. And by using this method of formal analysis, we can learn a lot about a piece by studying the relationships between the elements of the work. And much can be learned from a piece by taking a greater amount of time than you normally would to observe it. And the more we are able to observe visually allows us to understand not only the obvious visual qualities such as the subject and style, but also the context. And our visual observations allow us to connect these visual characteristics to the cultural and historical context. And this method allows us to gain strength in our visual literacy. And so here is a piece by Ghirlandaio depicting Christ. And I'm going to give you an example of a formal analysis of this in the next slide. And so as I show you the other artworks in the tour today, I want you to think about this method of analysis so that you can use it when you are observing artworks on your own. So here we have The Man of Sorrows by Domenico Ghirlandaio, and he was a very influential artist in Florence in the early Renaissance, and he actually was the teacher to Michelangelo, who was, as you know, very prominent in the High Renaissance. And so upon looking at this painting, first we can observe the style, and this is clearly a painting, and it was done in egg tempered paint. And we can tell this because if we look at the painting techniques, we can observe steely lines and crisp edges, as well as its meticulous detail and rich linear textures, and its overall emphasis upon a decorative flat pattern of bold color masses. Next, we can observe the subject. And we see that this is a painting of Christ Jesus. And we know this by looking at the visual context. As this man is portrayed with rays of golden light radiating from his head, which represents a halo. And we can also see that he is wearing a crown of thorns and is showing his hands, which have wounds from being nailed to the cross. So based off of our observations, we can already determine a lot from this painting, and this is a good skill that you can implement as you continue to study art history. Okay, so here's our first piece that we're gonna talk about. And so this was done by Masaccio and Masolino. And so as you know, Masaccio died early in his life, and so the artist Masolino took over for him. And so this is a religious piece. It is done 
wine in tempera and oil. But interestingly, Masaccio started the piece in tempera, and then when he died, Masolino took over and did in oil. And so, if we look here at what it depicts, we have um, John the Evangelist and Martin of Tours here, and then we're going to come look out the other side to see this on the other side here. So if you look at this side, we have St. Paul and St. Peter. And one of the interesting things about this is that Masaccio has the symbols that depict all of these saints, and this distinguishes who they are. So with St. Paul, he has the sword, and Peter has the key. And then if we look again on the other side, um, we have um, John the Evangelist with a quill, and then Martin of Tours with his staff. And if you know Martin of Tours, he was the first bishop of France. And so what's interesting about this piece, as I said, is that it was done in tempera, and you can tell this because of the gold. There was a lot of uh, gold leaf that he used to make this, but when Masolino took over, he did an oil. And you can really tell, because if you look at the faces here, you can see that the skin tone is a lot warmer than you would typically get with tempera. And something interesting to note is if you look, if you come a little bit closer and look here, the hands of Martin of Tours, they are a lot grayer than if you look at his skin tone. And this is probably because when Masaccio did it in tempera, he started with the hands, and then when Masolino took over, he finished in oil. And so that is why you can tell with the colors that they are a lot warmer and more realistic compared to what we done in tempera. So this is this painting here, and we'll move on to the next one. Okay, so the next piece that we have here is by Fra Angelico, and this depicts the funeral of the Virgin. And so this was done in egg tempera, and we can really see here that Fra Angelico really followed the trends of the time in Florence whenever he was first painting. And he actually trained under Lorenzo Monaco, who was one of the most famous Gothic painters, and so he took a lot of influence from him, but he also formed his own style as well. And if we look closely at this painting here, we can see that Fra Angelico really focused on linear perspective, and we can really tell this because the figures do move back in space, and if we look in the very back, we can see Jesus, who has already resurrected in heaven with angels, and they're portrayed much smaller than the figures in the front. And this was one of the first examples of where we start to see linear perspective being used. And something also to note about this is the colors. As you can see, the colors are very vibrant, and this was because Fra Angelico used the Cennini style of coloring and this was the layering of egg tempera and also the use of gold ground as well to create very vibrant colors that we can see that became very popular in Florence with egg tempera painting. And so when we think about this work, we will notice how Fra Angelico was really one of the founders of tempera painting in Florence, but he also really focused, as I said, on linear perspective and we will see that trend being more prominent in other works. Okay, so the next two pieces are actually both right up here, and so they're really high up, but if we look, first we have a sculpture that was created in Donatello's workshop. And so if we look closely at it, we can see that the baby Jesus is portrayed in a very realistic manner in that he looks like a human baby rather than a enlightened, mature man that was very popular portrayal in the Gothic period. And it's interesting to note about this piece because we can really think about what was being produced in Donatello's workshop. And so 
what would happen, as you know, is that artists would train under Donatello, many of them were young boys, and they would copy his style, and eventually, as they would continue to work, they would produce their own style, but this piece specifically would have really been based off of Donatello's work. And so, as you can see, it's very realistic. It would have been something that artists would have studied, especially people like Masaccio, who would then use that for their figures in their paintings. All right, so the next piece that we have is by Alessandro Filippetti, and he was actually a follower of Botticelli. And if we look here, we can tell that the style is very similar to Botticelli. And when we look back at Botticelli, he was actually inspired by and studied under Fra Filippo Lippi, who then trained Botticelli, and then, of course, Botticelli trained Filippetti. But something interesting to note about this piece is that it really does focus on Botticelli's unique style. And Botticelli really was an artist who maintained a unique style all throughout his career, despite the trends that were going on in Florence. And just looking at the piece, we can tell that it was very inspired by Botticelli, especially in the facial features, as the eyes are very round and he makes the figures very flush. And this is actually called a pity tondo piece. And these were round pieces that were created to be hung in houses in Florence. And it was mainly with scenes of the Virgin and Child and very feminine scenes that involved the Virgin because the home was where women resided. And so these paintings were really designed to be something that they would enjoy. actually a portrait by Botticelli and this is very interesting to note because this was done in egg tempera which was Botticelli's preferred medium throughout his entire career even whenever oil became popular he still stuck to tempera and this is an interesting portrait to note because this actually was thought to portray Giuliano de' Medici who was of course one of the members of the Medici family in Florence as you know and if we look here, we can see that he did use some elements of atmospheric perspective, which was something that I talked about that Leonardo da Vinci used. And you can really see this in the grayness that he uses in the background and the softness, which portrayed that the images did move back in space. because we can see here that Italy actually took inspiration from the Netherlands for their oil painting and it wasn't around the late 1400s that we started to see oil paint be used in Venice and so this is just a really great example of how we can see how it was used in the Netherlands and in Northern Europe. So if you look closely here there's a lot going on, and what's really important to note are the facial features and the color, and that it was a lot different from egg tempera, and that you were able to portray a lot more realism. And this becomes really important in the high and late Renaissance. So here we have the last piece on the tour, and this was done by Angelo de Messina, and it was actually done in Venice, and this was when oil paint was being introduced. And so this portrait here used oil paint, and we can tell because the paint is a lot softer and the features are more realistic, and you can really see the warmth of the face coming through, which oil paint was able to create. And this is just very important to 
note because this was whenever we see tempera becoming out of fashion and oil becoming in fashion, which will influence the late Renaissance and then into the later periods. 